Good morning, friends. Wanted to say that we appreciate you tuning in this morning and thank God for you. And uh, come out this morning and birds are still singing. You might be able to hear them in the background. I don't know, but uh, they're still singing. And, and uh, as long as the birds are still singing, we know God's taking care of them. Amen. But this morning we got great news. He's risen, amen. He is risen. Uh, of course, we knew that beforehand, but uh, this is a special day that, uh, as a child of God, uh, glories in the fact that he didn't stay dead, amen. I want us to look at uh, just for a few minutes. I, I won't keep you long. I know everybody uh, probably uh, just trying to get started this morning and and we want to uh, uh, bring you some good news and, and uh, tell you why that we, uh, we uh, reflect on this day. Uh, I, know, I know the world uh, looks at it as a, uh, a bunny rabbit day or uh, Easter basket day or whatever. It's a lot of times it's, it's a time for people to... Uh, get together as a family and, and uh, I, I don't uh, I don't uh, put down uh, gatherings or anything of that nature on this day I just believe that we need to always bear in mind the uh, importance of this day and what it stands for but I want us to look briefly here uh, today this morning in the book of John and uh, uh, I want us to look at throughout the book of John how that uh, who Jesus is and uh, what he done and, and why this is so important this morning. Uh, in John 1 we see that uh, Jesus was baptized and God descended upon him like a dove. In John 2 he turns the water into wine. In John 3 he speaks with Nicodemus. In John 4, he changes a Samaritan woman's life forever. In John 6, he feeds 5,000 and walks on water. In John 8, he forgives a woman caught in adultery. In John 9, he heals a man born blind. In John 11, he raises Lazarus from the dead. In John 12, he rides into town uh, on a donkey uh, which is uh, considered Palm Sunday, and uh, if if anybody wonders about the palms, uh, just just a little side note on that, uh, uh, you'll see that uh, the children were praising the Lord in the temple, and it was because that mom and dad was praising Him on His way in that morning, and uh, so so they learned by example. So uh, just a side note on that. But in John 13. He has the Last Supper. In John 18, uh, we find him in the Garden of Gethsemane. We find him betrayed, and we find him taken into captivity. Now, uh, I want you to uh, think about these things because uh, these are things that are important. Uh, I want you to bear in mind uh, what these people were going through. Many uh you know, put Peter down for denying Christ uh, three times, and, uh, and 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 rightly so. I mean, he, he shouldn't have done it. But uh, before we get too uh, rambunctious on our uh, judgmental attitudes, uh, we need to look at what these people are were up against and what they were experiencing. Uh, we find that Jesus had done all of these things. Uh, we find that, uh, you know, there wasn't much said about him for most of his life, but uh, then all of a sudden he shows up the last few years of his life. He shows up and he begins to change everything. Uh, he begins to uh, uh, go against what the... the the leaders had taught before and he begins to stand against a lot of things and, and people begin to look at him and they see how that he's changing their lives and how that he's healing people and he's raising the dead and, and he's doing all of these things and they're watching him and they're seeing these things and they're finding hope in a, in a Jesus, in someone, in a Savior that they can look upon and uh, they're finding comfort and peace in this, uh, in this man and 
And then now here he is in, in chapter 18. He's, uh, he goes into the Garden of Gethsemane. And there uh, he is betrayed uh, by Judas. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, as we, we've talked before, uh, we'll, we'll not get too far off on that. But uh, at least Judas got three, 30 pieces of silver. Uh, most time we don't get that uh, for betraying Christ. But he was taken into captivity there. Uh, there and, and uh, you know, no doubt people were looking and they were thinking, okay, now wait just a moment. Uh, uh, this is... This this is supposed to be uh, uh, the Son of God, but uh, you'll read there that one place they call him a prophet, which he is prophet, priest, and king, but I'm afraid that a lot of them still had him just as a prophet, uh, just as a good man, just as someone that brought hope, just as someone uh, that brought uh, a, 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 a portion of peace, and just as someone that uh, might have given them a glimpse uh, of glory, but uh, you know, I'm afraid that they really didn't grasp the fact that he uh, was the Messiah, that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But but we find that it was, they went through a mock trial and and uh, they they. They pretty much just made fun of him, and and they beat him, and they crucified him on a cross, and and there, uh, uh, no doubt, just just disintegrated everyone's hope and and trust and and their their peace, everything that they had accomplished in the last few years was all of a sudden just done away with and. And it was put into a tomb, and uh, all their hopes and dreams uh, were put into the tomb uh, as Jesus was buried there. And, uh, you know, these people uh, went away sorrowful, and uh, so many wept and were uh, so uh, disheartened that uh, all their hope was gone. And, you know, the thing about it is, as uh, you and I today, we look around and we see so many things that are happening, and, and we thank our hope is gone. Uh, we're in the middle of a uh, crisis right now and a lot of people think that our hope is gone and, and that the church is dying and, and that so many things are taking place and uh, you know uh, people are, are just afraid but as I said when we started you know the uh, a preacher preached a message about the birds are still singing and this morning uh, the birds are still singing and, and my friend uh, God said he'd take care of those. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure if he'll take care of a bird, he'll take care of me. And, and uh, you know, it is so wonderful how that God is uh, taking care of you and I. And no matter what may come or go, or no matter what may seem as if uh, we've lost our hope, as if we've lost our way, or, or things are not going to work out, or things are not going to happen. Uh, friend, let me tell you, let me assure you, that hope is not gone. Hope is not gone. As we look, I know I'm kind of dark. You can't really see me. It's a on count of lighting, but uh, it, it's not that uh, I'm here to be seen this morning, uh, but we're looking for a sunrise, and uh, you know the sunrise that you and I are looking for is that big orb in the sky uh, that we're hoping to come up, and we see now that uh, the clouds are kind of thick, and, and we see that uh, uh, you know the sun is not going to be able to shine through them, but let me tell you friend, uh, the sun is shining and the sun that uh, we put all of our hope and trust in, uh, he rose a long time ago. And, and we don't have to worry about that no more. Uh, my friend, it doesn't matter what comes or what goes. It doesn't matter if it's raining. It don't matter if it's storming. It don't matter if it's snowing. It doesn't matter if it's cloudy. <clears throat> my friend, the sun is still rose. Uh, uh, my friend, I want you to look behind me right now and you can see the clouds. And, and you can see some are a little darker and some are a little lighter and, and the reason that is is because that uh, the sun has actually rose this morning and uh, the sun is up this morning and, and it's up there and it's shining and we might not be able to see it because of the clouds but it's there and friend let me tell you something other uh, we might not be able to see that uh, Jesus has risen we might not be able to see uh, that he's still on the throne we might not be able to
will see that he's got this all in control. But my friend, let me uh, reassure you this morning uh, that he has risen in birth. In John chapter 20, uh, it speaks of his resurrection. Praise the Lord. He come out of that grave when they went there. Uh, my friend, they uh, went there to uh, anoint his body. But uh, friend, I want to tell you something. Other. The stone had been rolled away. Uh, he was gone. And uh, friend, he lives forever. Uh, uh, but I'm afraid today that many still have him in that manger. Many still have him on the cross. Uh, many still have him in the tomb this morning. Uh, but he's not there. Uh, my friend, he's not there. Uh, many still live with that Jesus that is unable to speak. And uh, they live with that Jesus that's bound by circumstances. They live with that Jesus that has been boxed up in a tomb. Uh, uh, my friend, but let me tell you, he is still saving lives. He's still answering prayers. He's still touching lives. And he's still changing hearts this morning. He has risen. Friend, you and I have got all the reason in the world to praise him this morning. Uh, we've got all the reason in the world why we should be happy with the utmost uh, happiness and joy in our heart. Regardless of what's going on around us. Regardless of what's taking place. Uh, friend, I want to tell you, you can read in the uh, uh, the uh, Facebook, you can read in the paper, uh, you can watch on the news and you can see how all of this uh, stuff is taking place, how all this doom and gloom is taking place. And uh, <coughs> Excuse me, uh, but I want to tell you something other. Jesus is still on the throne. He's still alive. He's still got you and I right where He wants us. He's got us in the palm of His hands taking care of us. He's hiding you and I in the cleft of the rock. No matter what comes or what goes, I'm assured that He's got everything in control. That He's taking care of you and I. I want to say I appreciate you tuning in this morning. I want to say that uh, that you and I ought to be able to hold our heads up and be uh, glorious and, and joy in our hearts that we know that we know that we know our Redeemer lives. Amen. Uh, this morning I want to encourage you to tune in at 10 a.m. Uh, Brother John uh, uh, puts a uh, Sunday school lesson on the uh, uh page this morning. I want you to tune in with Brother John and enjoy that Sunday school lesson. Then at 11 o'clock, uh, we'll be uh, getting back on here and bringing you an exciting uh, a message about Jesus again. Amen. Uh, I, I want to talk about a good firm foundation in this morning. Uh, as message if the Lord permit and we just ask you to uh, tune back in with us and and uh, I, I want to ask you to just like and share and, and do all that good stuff with all your friends and uh, share our page and and it, it's not about uh, uh, getting my name out I, I, it doesn't matter if anybody ever knows who I am uh, as long as Jesus knows who I am that's all that matters but uh, it's not about that, but it's about sharing the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. It's about sharing hope, uh, and it's about sharing uh, uh, the the marvelous uh, uh, events that have taken place and, and what can happen in their heart and life, the hope that they can have if they'll just accept Him. Uh, let me encourage you to do that. Share it with all your friends this morning. And we look forward uh, to getting back together with you at uh, 10 and at 11 o'clock. We want to say thank you and God bless. And we just praise the name of Jesus.